Have you ever pondered the environmental impact of a single plastic bag? It's a question that may seem insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but it's one that holds a lot of weight when you really think about it. Plastic bags, they're everywhere. In our homes, in our cars, in our workplaces, even in our oceans. They're a staple of modern convenience, yet they're also one of the greatest environmental problems we face today. This is the paradox of the plastic bag. On one hand, plastic bags are incredibly useful. They're lightweight, durable, and they can hold a surprising amount of weight. They're waterproof, which makes them perfect for carrying groceries in the rain. They're also very cheap to produce, which is why they're so widespread. But on the other hand, plastic bags are a major environmental problem. They take hundreds of years to decompose, and even when they do, they break down into tiny microplastics that are virtually impossible to clean up. These microplastics can end up in our oceans, where they're mistaken for food by marine life. This can lead to starvation, poisoning, and even death for these creatures. So why do we still use plastic bags? The answer lies in their manufacturing process. It's a process that's fast, efficient, and cost-effective. But it's also a process that's largely hidden from public view. Few of us really understand how plastic bags are made, or why they're such a problem for our environment. That's why we're here. We want to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the creation of a plastic bag. We believe that by understanding this process, we can better comprehend the gravity of the environmental problem we're facing. So are you ready to take this journey with us? Are you ready to peel back the layers of this everyday item and see what's really beneath the surface? If so, then buckle up. Join us as we delve into the fascinating yet alarming journey of a plastic bag's creation. The life of a plastic bag begins with the extraction of fossil fuels. At the heart of this process are two key players, petroleum and natural gas. These are ancient resources, formed over millions of years from the remains of plants and animals, buried and subjected to extreme heat and pressure. These are not just the remnants of a bygone era, but the raw materials that form the foundation of our plastic world. The extraction of these fossil fuels is a colossal effort, involving massive drilling rigs both on land and at sea. Each day, millions of barrels of oil and countless cubic feet of natural gas are pulled from the Earth's crust, a testament to our insatiable appetite for these resources. But the journey has only just begun. Once extracted, these raw materials are transported across vast distances, often by pipelines, tankers or trucks. They are then delivered to refineries, which are like enormous kitchens, where the raw materials are cooked and processed. In these refineries, the crude oil and natural gas undergo a series of chemical reactions in a process known as cracking. This process breaks down the larger, heavier molecules into smaller, lighter ones. It's a bit like baking a cake, but instead of flour and eggs, we're using hydrocarbons. During this process, a gas called ethylene is produced from the petroleum, and propylene is produced from the natural gas. These are the primary ingredients for making plastic. They're like the flour and sugar in our cake analogy. The ethylene and propylene are then further processed and combined in a procedure known as polymerization. This process links the small molecules together into long chains, creating a material that is durable, flexible, and most importantly, plastic. And so with a little help from chemistry and a lot of help from fossil fuels, we've created the building blocks for our plastic bag with the birth of our primary ingredients, ethylene and propylene, we're ready to move on to the next step. From raw materials to a usable form, the transformation is quite a spectacle. It's an odyssey that begins with ethylene and propylene. These are hydrocarbons found abundantly in natural gas and petroleum, but in their raw form, they're not much use to us. So we need to give them a little nudge, a little push in the right direction. That's where the process of polymerization comes in a chemical reaction that transforms these simple molecules into complex chains called polymers. It's like turning a handful of loose beads into a beautiful, intricate necklace. These polymers are the building blocks of plastic, the foundation upon which all else is built. But the journey doesn't end there. These polymer beads need to be transformed further. They need to be melted. In a process that's akin to cooking, the beads are heated until they turn into a molten mass. This mass is then forced through a dye a tool that shapes the plastic. This process is known as extrusion. It's like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube, only on a much grander scale. The molten plastic is pushed, or extruded, through the dye to form a thin, continuous sheet. 
This sheet is then rapidly cooled, solidifying it and preserving its shape. It's a delicate dance, a balancing act of temperature and pressure, of heat and cool. Too hot and the plastic might burn, too cold, and it might not form properly. It's a process that requires precision and control, a testament to the marvel of modern manufacturing. And there you have it, from humble hydrocarbons to a thin sheet of plastic. It's a transformation that's as remarkable as it is commonplace, a testament to human ingenuity and the power of chemistry. Our plastic sheets are ready, but we're not quite there yet. The journey continues, and the plastic is yet to take its final form. But that's a story for another time. For now, let's marvel at the journey so far, at the transformation that's taken place. The flat sheets of plastic are now ready to be sculpted into the shape we're all too familiar with. So, how does a simple flat sheet transform into a handy, lightweight carrier? The journey is not as complex as you might think. The plastic sheets, now cooled and hardened, are fed into a bag-making machine. This contraption is a marvel of modern engineering, capable of turning a sheet of plastic into a bag in mere seconds. First, the machine cuts the sheets into the desired bag size. Imagine it like a tailor, expertly measuring and cutting the plastic to ensure each bag is just the right size. The precision involved here is astounding, with every cut calculated to minimize waste and maximize efficiency. Once the sheets are cut, they're sealed. This is where the magic happens. The machine heats the edges of the plastic, melting them slightly. Then it presses the heated edges together, forming a secure seal that transforms the plastic sheet into a bag. It's a bit like how you might seal an envelope, but on a much larger scale. But what about the handles, those integral parts of the bag that make them so convenient to carry? Well, they're cut out from the top of the bag using a specialized tool. This tool makes a perfect U-shaped cut creating a handle that's sturdy and easy to grip. And let's not forget about the logos. These are added using a printing process, often before the bag is even cut and sealed. The logos are printed onto the plastic using high quality inks that won't fade or smudge, ensuring the bag carries the brand's image wherever it goes. Finally, the bags are packaged, ready to be shipped off to stores around the world. They're usually packed in large boxes or on rolls, depending on the type of bag and the preferences of the store they're going to. And there you have it, the birth of a plastic bag. From a simple flat sheet to a handy carrier, the process is as fascinating as it is intricate. But remember, while these bags may be convenient, they come with a hefty environmental price tag. So we've seen how a simple plastic bag is born, but what's the cost of this process to our environment? From the very beginning, the birth of a plastic bag is a resource-hungry process. It starts with the extraction of crude oil or natural gas, an activity that not only consumes substantial amounts of energy, but also contributes to air and water pollution. Moreover, the refining process that transforms these raw materials into plastic resin pellets is energy intensive and emits harmful greenhouse gases. Then we move on to the transformation phase. Here, the plastic resin is heated and shaped into a bag. This process is also energy heavy and contributes to air pollution due to the release of toxic fumes. Not to mention, any defects or waste produced during this phase usually end up in landfills, adding to the already significant problem of plastic waste. Finally, the bag takes its final form, ready to carry your groceries or other items. But the environmental toll doesn't stop there. After serving its short-term purpose, the bag often ends up in a landfill, or worse, in our oceans, where it can take hundreds of years to decompose. This long decomposition process releases more greenhouse gases, while the bag poses a threat to wildlife if ingested. It's a stark picture, isn't it? The journey of a plastic bag from its creation to disposal is fraught with environmental hazards. The energy consumed, the pollution created and the waste generated are all stark reminders of the high environmental price we pay for the convenience of these seemingly innocent objects. Yet there's hope. By understanding this journey, we can make more informed choices. Opt for reusable bags. Recycle whenever possible. Be mindful of our consumption. Our actions, no matter how small, can make a difference. In understanding the journey of a plastic bag's creation, we realize the high environmental price we pay for convenience. Remember, every bag counts.